Hey there folks and thanks for joining me for another review. Today I'm going to briefly talk about the Boss Katana MK2 and I have the 112 50 watt combo that I'm going to be discussing today. Now it's not normal for me to play a solid state amp at all but with the recent events of tubes skyrocketing in price, some of them being hard to find, I thought, man, I've heard a lot of good things about this particular amplifier platform, so if I can find one for a good price, I'm gonna go out there and pick it up. I got one used, it's in good shape, it's almost never been played before, so I've been pretty happy uh, with the condition and the price I paid for it, because it was basically just given away. But there's some things that I found out as soon as I got at home that does not function like any of the tube amps that I'm familiar with. And I've got a bunch of vintage tube amps. I've got a bunch of new tube amps. I've built tube amps. I know a lot about amplifiers that use vacuum tubes. But I don't, like I said, I don't use solid state amps very much at all. So it took me a little while to figure this one out and to be able to get a good tone out of it. It's not as versatile as it's advertised or as people want to make it out to be, but it does have some pretty usable sounds in there. You just got to figure out how to get them out. I had a really hard time just looking on YouTube and finding some good information about it. I, I found that a lot of what I was seeing and listening to was, was convoluted crap that didn't necessarily apply to, to what I was wanting to know and what I was wanting to do with it. I'm not going to say it's a great sounding amplifier, but it's not bad in certain ways. I don't think I would use this for recording, maybe a demo or something real quick, but not a real recording to be proud of. But it could possibly be used in a gigging scenario, depending on how you play and, and what kind of processes you go through to get your sound. So to cut to the chase, I'm not going to go over the specs of this thing. It's a 112 50 watt combo solid state. It's got a bunch of onboard effects that I'm sure you can read all about on any uh, website that's got it for sale. For me, I've been able to get a pretty good acoustic tone out of it with, a, with my acoustic guitars on the acoustic channel. And I've been able to get a pretty good clean sound out of it. The crunch and the two high gain sounds uh, channels just... To me, to my ear, it, it doesn't sound good. It's not usable. It may be something fun to play around with, but it's not something that I would really use for anything practical. Um, some of the effects are kind of okay. The reverb is decent, but a lot of the other effects are really just toys to play with, and they don't have a very practical use uh, for me anyway. You guys may find something different. I'm, I'm not the authority on anything. I'm just telling you my experience, but I also don't use effects very often. Uh, what I've found to be a good solution to getting a decent sound out of this amp is actually running some of the pedals I use regularly through tube amps through the front end of this thing. And I've been able to get some pretty decent sounds at any kind of volume level that, that you want to get them at. Now, of course, the lower you turn it, down the less rich the tone is just like with a tube amp i hate to say it but here's the settings that i'm using on the amp right now to get this clean tone with my les paul my 58 vos <laughs> And I think that's a pretty, pretty respectable tone. Um, I'm running through uh, both pickups at the same time here, which is about the only way I play Les Paul. But here we go with a little neck pickup. The bridge. got a good bit of bass and it's got a good bit of volume as you can see from those settings I've got it on the middle wattage uh, setting I've gotten the master up pretty good but I could get a lot more volume out of this and it will hang with a drummer that's not crazy loud so 
that's the clean tone that you can get. Uh, a little jazzy blues type clean tone is, is, is pretty accessible uh, with a Les Paul or a Telecaster. I'm going to run through it in just a second. So uh, let's check out that Telecaster tone right now. So this is my road worn Telecaster with a Gibson humbucker in the neck pickup. So it's a little different than standard, but it's a old school Texas special and the bridge. So this is the kind of clean tones you can get with that Fender classic T sound. <laughs> To me, that's that's usable in a classic rock context, in a definitely in a blues or a jazz context. <laughs> Flip over to the bridge pickup, and you can get that. Pretty old school if you're looking for a country sound or something. Pretty good all around clean tone there. It's not quite as sweet and rich as, you know, a, a two powered Fender or something, but it's not bad and it's usable. And I would be willing to bet that it would be reliable for a while because I've not heard too much about this amp having uh, breakdowns or reliability issues. It's solid state, so, you know, you don't have the tube aspect to deal with, but they're not indestructible. So you, you got to keep that in mind as well. So now let's listen to the Telecaster with the t classic Tube Screamer sound uh, pedal in front of it. And this is the real pedal. This is not the Boss onboard effects because, like I said, I couldn't find a really usable tone with those. Here's the settings I'm using with the Tube Screamer, and the amp settings are the same as I had them before. <laughs> get a light breakup with a significant amount more of sustain. more sustain a lot more thickness and that's a usable tone certainly for a practice and you can definitely get the volume that you want out of it now let's flip over and listen to the plim soul the full tone plim soul pedal and this is a little bit more um, of a neutral eq with this one so you got more low end basically with a similar type but a, maybe a thicker creamier overdrive as you can see, settings on the Plim Soul, not very extreme, but it's a good pedal. Granted, it probably will cost more than this amp itself. <laughs>
chunkier sound, but again, sounds good running into the front end of the Katana. It's a usable tone, plenty of volume, and I actually like that sound pretty decent. I don't know if I'd use it for recording again, but it's certainly something to think about. Here is the 59, I'm sorry, 58 VOS Gibson um, Les Paul into the Plim Soul into the Katana. And this is definitely going to give you that classic Les Paul crank sound that we all love. side to it. And that is another usable tone. That's a giggable tone in certain situations. So Les Paul, Plimso, into the Katana. Now, finally, let's hear a little bit of Les Paul into the Tube Screamer on the front end. All right, now these are the same settings I used with the Telecaster. I haven't been tweaking this to get the absolute best tone. So you could get, you know, probably improve it a little bit. <laughs> Again, can't beat a Les Paul cranked up, and it gives a pretty good fake of what that would sound like crunk up through a, a nice British tube amp. It's not dead on, it's not as sweet, it's not as responsive, but it's pretty dang close. So anyway, I'm going to do a couple more reviews of the Boss Katana where I give you some breakdowns of how to get some specific classic tones. Because when I was checking this out, I couldn't find any good information on YouTube anyway about how to nail some classic rock tones, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. There's, there's four or five of those that are in this amplifier without putting any pedals through the front end that you can get pretty close to, at least close enough to jam along at home and feel like you're, you're right there if you've got the right guitar to put in front of it. If you got a Strat, if you got a Telecaster, if you've got a Les Paul, you're pretty much covering those bases. And this amp does a decent job of being fun. It does a pretty good job of getting that nice clean jazz tone. But like I said, check back with my channel. I'm gonna upload two or three more videos giving some specific settings all the way across the board of what I was able to use to get for instance, the, the, some tones off the uh, Pink Floyd Animals record, which is one of my favorite classic rock records, uh, some Zeppelin, some classic Zeppelin, and then some, some traditional blues and some new school blues uh, sounds. So I'm going to get to work on those, and I'll have those out in the next few days, so check back. But thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this. It was brief. I know I didn't cover all the bases with this amp, but like I said, you can find all the specs in a million different places. Any online shopping venue where you're looking at this will have all the specifics of it. So overall, it's a good amp for the money, especially if you can find a clean example used like I did. I paid right at $100 for this thing, so it was like walking away for nothing. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Check back, check out some of my music, and uh, we'll see you guys out there in the real world.